degree in human rights come from Uganda, the Gambia and France reunion and have passionately pursued many creative means to bring attention to this very serious issue that is claiming the lives of children on the continent. Now, part of their activities was on campus an exhibition which was held at the law faculty and drew in a lot of people. In fact, the campaign alone trended on Twitter at number four. <laughs> so in studio to chat to us more about their campaign, we're joined by Saini, Winnie and Clotide. Welcome to the news platform and thank you so much for making time for us tonight. Thank you for having Thank us. You, yes. And uh, just give us a brief introduction of yourself, seeing that you guys, you've actually graduated. You've made it in life. So <laughs> just, <laughs> um, um, we're on our way to <laughs> getting <laughs> our master's. My name is Winnie Appeal. Uh, I'm doing, like she said, the, my, I'm an MPhil student, so I don't have a law background uh, in human rights and democratization in Africa. Mm. I'm here to do the, the master's degree in human rights and democratization in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Sieni Ba. I am from the Republic of the Gambia. And prior to joining the LLM program, I was a teaching assistant at the University of the Gambia. Mm. Yeah, nice. Cool. And uh, just to get straight into it, would you please tell us more about the hashtag Child Not Witch campaign? Okay, um, the Child Not Witch campaign is a campaign that targets um, ending children being accused of witchcraft in Africa. Um, but of course, we, it, it takes into its, it's a campaign that targets creating awareness of this problem, mm. seeing as um, we know that it isn't something that most of us have heard of. If In fact, I didn't know about it until I actually got to, to, mm. to hear that it was happening because it's, it's not something that I'm familiar with in my country and I'm sure many people could also be like me, yeah. uh, especially if they are not in countries that it could be facing. So this campaign, Child Not Witch, is a campaign that targets creating awareness so people can know that it's, it's actually happening and not just in Africa, world over. Yes, it's, it's a campaign that we, we actually discover the issue uh, dr during this master. Mm. And it's a, it's a very shocking problem that is happening to those children. As you said, they are, they are being tortured, they are being mm. killed, beheaded, burned with acid because of, of, of being accused of witches mm. by religious leaders, pastors, or even their own parents, their own siblings, their own family. So, so we really want to create awareness for people to sensitize the population, mm. to sensitize everybody worldwide about this topic. Topic. That's why we want to focus. Uh, we we have a very general general hashtag mm. that does not focus only on Africa, even though it started Abs yeah. in Africa. But we want to spread the the issue, the, the the awareness everywhere, so people know about it, and we can fight against it. Now, yeah. why do you think this is such a, um, for lack of a better expression, a well kept? secret. Um, we know about slavery on the continent, but I mean, when I came across this information, I was absolutely shocked. It's not yeah. information that the, you know, the everyday on man the on the street would know. Why is this not headlining news? Oh, oh, okay, like uh, even in the face of uh, documented violent attacks against children on the basis of witchcraft accusation mm. across the length and breadth of Africa, yet their stories actually never get mentioned mm. or to attract the needed attention of the of policy makers so in light of this uh, we seek to bring up their stories with the hope that human rights defenders and institutions will take it up you know yeah it it has been happening, you know, for quite a while now. But mm. for some it's just reasons, a matter of we don't know about it. Mm. It's not spoken yeah. of. Yeah. So what do you hope to achieve with this campaign? I think apart from um, raising awareness and, and, and sensitizing people, what mm. sort of action, what do you hope um, this will move people to mm. do? Because, I mean, it's a, it's a form of activism. So how are you hoping it's actually going to move and propel people into action? Um, I think... Um, in reports that were done by UNICEF and many other international bodies, uh, just to go back to your previous question, one of the main reasons why they found that, you know, this wasn't something that most people knew about is because it's something that happens um, within communities. It, right. it's, yeah. it's something that is majorly based on a belief system. Mm. So people, because people believe it's right, mm -hmm. yes. they will not report it. So hopefully, we hope that um, bringing it out to light and showing people that you know what, just because um, you think that the child has caused this problem, uh, it, it's not the way it is. Because um, one of the, the, the underlying causes of 
children being accused of witchcraft is ignorance and mm. um, wanting to scapegoat the child. Yeah. So because of that, we hope that people will get to know that, hey, my neighbor did this. Where do I report? We are yeah. hoping to create not just awareness of the com- of the issue, but also awareness of avenues that they can go to. Mm. Awareness of the fact that um, states, there's certain states in Africa that have laws mm-hmm. against these crimes. For example, um, a Kwai bomb in Nigeria. But regardless of that, this, the it's practice still is happening. still happening. So yeah. we need to we, are, we want to create awareness in a way that the state is able to be called <coughs> to accountability. And yes. And the, the cases do not happen only in Africa. There are cases mm. in Latin America, in mm. India, in Papua New uh, Guinea, Vanuatu. Those, all those places, they do have some witchcraft problem to children being accused of being witches and being killed and tortured because of that. So it's not only an African problem that we would like to, to address. And um, yeah. Winnie, you, you mentioned that part of this, most of this happens because people are ignorant on the child. Why is it that we're finding that it's mostly children who are being targeted, who are being accused of being a, of being a witch or practicing witchcraft? Mm. Um, I think, and I'll ask my colleagues to fit into yeah. that as well. Um, one of the major reasons is, like I said, a scapegoat. A child is innocent. A child is young. The they child can't do is, much. They can't do much. Mm. So you will find that most of these children, especially in on the African context, um, they're accused of being witches because they're disabled. You'll find someone who has mm. autism. So mm-hmm. the child can't defend themselves against this mm. person. So the person... Mm-hmm. Most of the cases, it's um, say you'll have misfortune in your family. You can't go around and blame your wife. I mean, there's those cases. There's yeah. women being accused of witchcraft as well. But then children are easy targets. They can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and in, in some families, you, you have stories where you have a death in, in, in the family and the youngest child is being accused of, of being the cause of this death. The youngest. Yeah. The youngest, yeah. And, and or, or the child that is less, um, that is the weakest, for instance. Mm. So in certain families, the, their own parents, they do accuse their children of being witches and they yeah. are the one doing the harm to their children. Yeah. With, uh, because of ignorance, because of lack of education, poverty, despair, mm-hmm. they are mm-hmm. desperate. They have to find uh, an, um, someone who, to blame. To blame. Yeah. Yes. Like uh, in, in countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo and Angola, accusations of witchcraft uh, against children appear to be linked to extreme poverty as parents seek to reduce the family's financial burden. So by their own kids. So that changes, doesn't make so, sense. So changes in the family structures, in particular the relationship between parents and children brought about by urban life and economic instability also is also taught to drive accusations against children. In armed conflict situations also, you know, such you know situations is not is not quite rare. Yeah. Now, you've already started um, this campaign with the first activation taking place on, on campus. But I want to know, what are some of the challenges that you've encountered running a project of this magnitude that is so big that it trends at number four <laughs> on South African Trends Map? Thanks to the exhibition that we launched uh, on the 19th of May, we, we succeeded in getting the fourth uh, rank in, on Twitter. Mm. And that was a, a huge success it that was, we didn't was. expect yes. at all. So mm. we're very, very, very happy with that. Uh, it was thanks to all of, thanks to everyone that uh, used the hashtag, that tweeted, that uh, used the hashtag on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And we do need this kind of help to... Yeah. to to keep the the campaign going, mm. so so now with with this show and with the the other uh, sharing that we'll do later, we hope that this campaign will definitely reach bigger audiences <coughs> than than just South Africa. Yeah, um, some of the challenges that we face, like you said, it's it's a huge thing, especially. Um, dealing with something as heart-wrenching as this. You see children being killed by their own parents. Yeah. You, 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 you see mm. documentaries of a father actually saying, she's a child and I ha- she's a witch and I have to kill her. And this is his own daughter. It, 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 it has an emotional toll on you. Absolutely. But yeah. we, I believe we chose to use that emotion to just, as energy, to drive the campaign even mm. harder. And because, it's working. Yes. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're glad it is. Like, yes. like in, in my case, after 
here in the, the, the whole situation, I made a little research. Mm. And from my research findings, I tried to reach out to my colleagues within my network to discuss this issue, but there was, you know, persistent denial of its existence. Mm. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that's a big challenge, you know, to... And to another campaign. challenge is that people do not know about it, so they don't yeah. understand from the beginning. Yeah. I'm not sure, but are those children uh, witches, actually? Mm. Are they doing something of witchcraft? Or what's happening? Why are they being accused? And they are being accused out of nowhere. Yeah. So. And uh, I, I find it particularly interesting because with something like witchcraft, you cannot actually prove. And it's a child. They are the most vulnerable members of society. But we also want to know, seeing that, of course, it's an awareness campaign, but we, we understand that you've been gathering evidence. Everything that you've gathered in the end, your research, what are you going to do with it? Are there any uh, hopes of actually taking states and persecuting them before the African court? <laughs> yes, so <laughs> what, is, what is the next step? So we've gathered the research and yeah. the evidence and we know that this problem exists and you know, we've gotten South Africans and Africans to rally behind us. Oh. What is the next step? Yes, there is actually a case um, uh, being, uh, uh, some of our colleagues are working on the case going to the ECOWAS court. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so things can be done. Yeah. Things can definitely be done, but it's the beginning. So we would like, because we don't have time with only this short campaign to, to focus on, on, on bringing a case, we hope mm. that this campaign will definitely help bringing other cases to, to mm -hmm. the commission, the African commission or the African court. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, like she said, um, it's it's information, but again, it's opening up a channel for conversation right. because we know that, like we said, all these various reports come out and say no one wants to talk about it, or the people who talk about it are only like NGOs that are working in countries that are affected by it. And but they're now, working in isolation. Yes, exactly. I imagine that's another problem. Another problem. Yeah. So if, if we have, we, if we are able to talk about it in South Africa, knowing that it isn't really a problem per se here, and the countries that, you know, have that issue see that there's actually support from yeah. the rest of the world. Mm. Imagine what that can do. Mm. Open up discussion, open up um, interventions from other organizations. Speaking of other organizations, we were able to work, and this was uh, another um, privilege that we had, to work with organizations uh, working on the ground, dealing with the actual issue. Yeah. They, they were able to tell us, this is how the problem is, this mm. is what we're trying to do, and whatever support that we needed, mm. they gave us. Yeah. Now, before I ask my, my last yes. question, it's it seems to me that this happens in communities where people are indoctrinated, mm -hmm. right? So there's this common belief system mm -hmm. and traditions are very deeply rooted, especially on the African continent. Mm -hmm. So how do we unlearn and unthink and, you know, unbecome all of these traditional things? I imagine it's also going to take a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah like uh, scholars have really struggled to define understand and explain the the concept of you know witchcraft like you say, in in africa mm. but the dominant narrative is that you know economic uh, instabilities and social instabilities are quite responsible for this because whenever yeah. parents find it very difficult to actually provide. get a job provide for the family the default position is to blame someone else absolutely and in the family setup the child is quite very vulnerable mm. so that's a major issue if mm. we can really work on the economy and Mm. And the social fabric, that would actually So it's all a socio-economic, yeah. um, intertwined, yeah. interlinked problem. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it, it can indeed take a lot of time if, if the problem is, no, is very unknown. However, if the world is aware of what's happening, mm. the government will have to, to focus their efforts mm. to, to, to hinder the, the practice. Mm. So it can actually be very fast mm. if the world, if the people, if the population knows about it and if there is an education being made about the problem. Mm. Because changing mentalities, it can be a question of just one talk. If right. you just tell them this is wrong and it, it won't solve your problems, mm. then they will stop. Mm. Yeah. And how do people get involved with the program? We've already started with the activation um, on campus, but people outside of the university, people, you know, within um, the law society in mm. South Africa, how do people rally behind this, this campaign? 
Um, it's it's quite easy, so to speak, because it's majorly an online campaign. So it's just hashtag child not witch and tweet, retweet. We're actually not using the, the, the hashtag just to get more retweets <laughs> yeah. per se. But we, we really want to get as many stories, as many experiences as possible. And we've actually been able to do that. I think one of the major reasons why we hit fourth was that people were sharing their experiences. Yeah, they were. In, in their own countries, they were coming out and saying, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, it's not just Nigeria, it's not just Gabon, this country as well. So, so yes, yeah, so the hashtag child not which on Facebook and on Twitter. And if, if you don't have Twitter, it's not a problem. <laughs> you can just like and share what, yes. what we post on, on Facebook with the hashtag. So even only on Facebook and Instagram, I, I know s- most of, of yeah. us have Facebook. Mm. So yeah, it, it's quite easy to support us. And uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. It was really an eye opener. And at some yes. point it was getting personal and emotional. <laughs> but uh, we wish you good luck with your campaign. You know, wish that one day we'll actually see you on the TV screens actually fighting this and that made bear fruits for you. Yes. And, and we wish you all the best of luck with your studies. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, that's all we have for this interview here on Tax Fam 107.2. And coming up, I have a treasure with this.